Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lay, and today I'm gonna talk about some new zone we've never talked about before, the transition zone. Kinda spooky sounding, isn't it? It's really important for water penetration inside of our concrete. We're gonna talk more about fluid movement today. So concrete's a porous material, yeah, we've talked about that before, and we wanna make it as hard as possible for outside fluids to penetrate into our concrete. That could be um, water carrying ions, could just be water itself, could be de-icing salts, it, fluids or even gases, you know? Um, carbon dioxide coming into our concrete, okay, can actually carbonate it, okay? That's another fluid that causes problems with the long-term durability. So I'm really talking about durability. And the scientific term for this idea is called mass transport. So if you're talking to other scientists about this, you're gonna say mass transport. But in the concrete world, we like to call this permeability, okay? So if you're talking to another concrete person, you'd say, oh, I want low permeability. And that's true. That's what concrete people think it is you want. But we really want it hard for outside fluids to get inside of our concrete, outside ions to move inside of our concrete. And we care about this because many of the things that can prematurely end the life of concrete are caused by penetration of outside fluids. For example, corrosion. That's corrosion, that's outside salts coming in, corroding the reinforcing seal. Could be um, de-icing salts, could be ocean water. That's a problem, that's a problem. Freeze thaw, that's water coming in, freezing, causing damage, it's a problem. Again, if we keep that water out from, from, from the beginning, everything would be great. Sulfate attack, outside sulfide ions being carried into the concrete, they actually attack the concrete from the inside, cause a reverse type of reaction to happen that causes the concrete to decompose. Ugh, ugh. Carbonation. Carbon dioxide coming in, attacking the the uh, the calcium hydroxide, reducing it, lowering the pore solution pH, causing corrosion. Ugh. Carbonation again, it's a problem. Alkali silica reaction. This is where our aggregates are actually attacked by the internal high pore solution pH. They start to break down. Water comes in, causes this gel to expand, causes cracking. Ugh, ha, ha, ha. Water again. A problem. If we have acid attack coming from the outside into our concrete, and there's even more, okay? Lots and lots and lots of examples where outside fluids penetrate into our concrete. They bring with them something else. They cause problems. Ugh. If we could reduce this, everything about our concrete would end up being better. Remember, remember, a low water cement ratio makes a less connected pore structure. And that's what we want, okay? But there's something else that we have to worry about. And actually, just to build on this, we wanna make sure we have, what was it again? Close proximity of cement grains at the beginning. Then we want them to be close after placement. We wanna get all those voids out. And then we wanna promote hydration, right? So the microstructure grows and fills any, uh, any spaces. We wanna do all three of these things but they're not enough. There's something else we have to worry about. Something called the transition zone. Do, 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 do. It's kind of like the twilight zone. This is the region between the aggregate and the cement paste, and it's called the transition zone. Some people call it the TZ for short. I just call it transition zone. And in this region, the paste doesn't pack as well. The cement grains don't pack as well around the aggregate particles, that's one thing. And there also seems to be a higher water cement ratio, water to cement ratio in this region because of an accumulation of water. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, when I make cement, when I make concrete, pardon me, and I have paste here and I have aggregate here, the specific gravity of my cement paste is I'm mixing water and paste together, right? and I'm wa mixing water and cement. Specific gravity of cement's like 3.15. So my, my cement particles 
are going to want to settle out. Cement particles are going to want to go down. Okay? And my water is going to want to come up. Right? Because it's lighter. And that's what I'm showing over here. Water is going to come up. Cement's going to come down. And this is dependent on the fineness of your cement, the water cement ratio. Okay? It's dependent on lots of different stuff. But this is called bleeding. This is a concrete term. Bleeding. It's when the water comes up to the surface. And in the past, when we used higher water cement ratios in our concretes before we had good admixtures, bleeding was much bigger of a deal than it is today. But the bleed water will come up, and usually they'll, they'll tell you um, that this bleed water is an indication of like initial setting versus final setting. Once you start to see the bleed water being sucked down inside of the hydrating cement paste, that's an indication that you're getting close to final set. That's an indication that your reactions are really starting to happen. But as this bleed water starts to come up to the top, some of it gets caught underneath these aggregates. So what's the water cement ratio going to be here? It's going to be higher than it is here, right? And higher water cement ratio, what's that mean about porosity? It's going to go up, right? And this, these regions is a major contributor to the transition zone. Here's an idealized picture of what the transition zone might look like. We see aggregate and we see higher amounts of calcium hydroxide than we see paste. Now, it probably doesn't look exactly like this. This is idealized, all right? Like a cartoon view. And... It's somewhere between 5 and 100 microns, and it's actually probably filled with, it's got some CSH in there. It just seems to probably have a higher amount of calcium hydroxide in this region than in the other parts. But some people truly do think that there's kind of this alignment, this kind of a channel. So if outside fluids hit this region, they could just, woohoo, baby, surf on through and enter the concrete. And that's not good. So this, people think that this aligned orientation of calcium hydroxide, or just more calcium hydroxide in this region, calcium hydroxide is kind of weak, it's kind of porous, okay, it can dissolve easily, okay. It leads to a reduction in strength, that's true, there's not as good a bond between the aggregates and the cement paste, and there's an increase in the porosity, or increase in the permeability, the outside penetration coming into our concrete. And... The good news is, is this transition zone can be reduced with time, especially if you use something called an SCM. That's a secondary cementitious material. That's like fly ash, slag, silica fume. That the concept is that this calcium hydroxide should be consumed over time. We'll talk more about that coming up. It should be consumed and you should make more CSH. So that it should get smaller. But there's some evidence that this transition zone exists. Um, for example, the strength for a fixed water cement ratio. If I'm comparing the strength of a paste versus a mortar versus a concrete, the paste is going to be stronger than the mortar, and the mortar is going to be stronger than the concrete. Okay? That's, why would that be? Well, by introducing aggregates... You're introducing these weak zones, these weak regions, okay, that decrease the capacity. And if you look at the permeability, or how easy it is for the outside water to penetrate into the concrete, outside fluids, the paste has the lowest permeability. That's good. And then mortar, and then concrete. Mortar actually has a lower permeability then concrete and paste has a lower permeability than mortar. And it's not quite as simple as this. The thickness of this transition zone is definitely impacted by the type of aggregate. So we don't have everything kind of figured out yet. But there seems to be different levels of transition zone. And it has to do with like the surface chemistry of the aggregate particles. Pretty insane, right? This also has an impact of the bond performance 
of the aggregate into the concrete. And a lot of people say things like limestone aggregates have better bond typically than river gravel aggregates. And it has something to do with the transition zone. So while this is cool and all, and reducing porosity is good, reducing pores is good, reducing the transition zone, understanding the transition zone is good. But one thing you also gotta realize is cracks. And that's one reason why I talked about in another video about drying shrinkage, right? Cracks are a big deal. And I don't wanna just use paste to make stuff because it will crack. I don't wanna use mortar if I can use concrete to make something because mortar is gonna have a higher paste content than concrete, okay? So even though it looks like I don't wanna use concrete here, because of cracking, I do. Because concrete can reduce my paste content, it can reduce the thing that shrinks and reduce the thing that causes cracks, I want to use concrete. I want to even not just use any concrete, I wanna use concrete with a lot of aggregates inside so I can minimize my paste as much as possible because if I get a crack, if I get a crack, it's like a super highway into my concrete. And it doesn't matter how good my water cement ratio is. It doesn't matter how good my, my actual compaction was during my construction process. It doesn't matter how good my curing was on the outside. It doesn't matter my transition zone I've got a short circuit. I've got a fuse that lets whatever it wants from the outside into my inside of my concrete. So if there's anything you can do to produce long-term durable concrete, it's reduced cracking. Thanks. Take care.